Good morning, Year 2. It's great to see you for our next maths lesson. I hope you enjoyed focusing on odd and even numbers yesterday. So today in maths, we're going to be focusing on dividing by five. So please pause the video here to write the short date 3.2.21 and the learning objective divide by five. Well done. So in our steps to success today, the first thing we're going to do is identify the whole amount. Then we're either going to share between five equal groups or group in the fives, depending on the question. And we're going to explore these differences at the beginning of our explore phase today. And throughout the um, session, it'd be great to either say or write the stem sentences and division, continuing to use the symbol correctly. So first of all, our review phase today is a bit different. We're not reviewing the last lesson, which is focused on odd and even numbers. We're reviewing our learning from um, a week or so ago, thinking about multiplication, because that's really going to help us today. So it'd be amazing if you could pause the video here and have a go at these questions. You don't need to do them all, and please don't write them down as that will take a lot of time. It'd be great just to discuss these questions and say your answers verbally. So from number one, there's repeated addition to solve. See if you can find your bonds to 10 to help you. From number two, you're finding the product, and you'll also notice that there is, we're showing the commutative law here. And in number three, it's an array. And the question is, how many groups of five are there? So please pause the video and have a go at these questions. Well done, you two. OK, I'm going to share the answers with you. So you may have noticed five at five equals ten. So you could have done this in a, a more efficient way of recognising that ten at ten equals twenty. And in the second number sentence, we can see that there is ten more. And we know ten more than twenty equals thirty. You may have also counted in your fives, counting in your multiples. So for example, 5, 10, 15, 20, to find the total altogether. So that's number one. If we have a look at number two, I'm sure you've noticed that it is commutative. So the factor pairs have been switched, but the product still remained the same. So for example, five times four equals 20, and four times five also equals 20. And for number three, looking at the array, we should have looked at the rows of five to find that there are two groups of five. I'm trying very hard with my pen to make this look neat. Okay, well done, you two. Let's move on to the explore phase for today. So Whitney has 35 cubes. She shares the cubes into five equal groups. How many will be in each group? So year two, you might not have 35 objects in the house. I know I've seen some pencils out in some households, but if you do have objects, that'll be brilliant. If you don't, please don't worry. You can either draw counters or just talk about it. So please have a discussion around how many cubes you think will be in each group, and then we'll come back together to review our learning. Well done, you two. So let's have a look together. So as you can see here, there are mm, cubes in each group now. So let's have a look together. Should we count one at a time? Let's join in with me, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven cubes in each group. Should we say that together? Seven cubes in each group. Brilliant. So as we're looking at this bar model here, thinking about repeated addition, this means that seven and seven and seven and seven and seven equals 35 cubes altogether. So what does each number represent here when we think about number 35, the number five and the number seven? And what is the division number sentence? Please pause the video here to discuss what each number represents and what the division is. Well done, year two. So 35 is the whole amount. It's the amount of cubes altogether. The number five represents the number of equal groups. So we have one, two, three, 
four, five equal roots. And the number seven represents the number of cubes inside each group. So our division is 35 divided by five equals seven. Should we say it together? 35 divided by five equals seven. Well done. Okay, we're going to have a look at this question in a, in a different way now. So again, Whitney has 35 cubes still. So 35 is still our whole amount. This time, instead of sharing the cubes, she's going to group them. And she groups the cubes into fives. To have a think, how many groups can she make? Please pause the video here to discuss this question. Well done, you two. So let's have a look together. I'm going to show the groups of five. So how many groups has she made? Well done, she's made seven groups. So we can answer this question by saying she can make mm groups of mm. Groups of mm. What's inside each group here too? How many cubes? Well done. Let's say this stem sentence together. She can make seven groups of five. Brilliant. Well done. So what does each number represent this time? And what do you think the division is? Please pause the video here to discuss. Well done, year two. So 35 still represents the whole amount, so the total amount of cubes altogether. The number five represents the number of cubes inside each group. And the number seven represents how many equal groups she can make. So the division, again, is 35 divided by five equals seven. So just to share with you year two now on, on one screen, the difference between these two questions we've just explored together. So first of all, Whitney was using sharing and there are seven cubes in each group. Okay, so for when we do this, that's like when we draw the total amount of counters and we share them out between the number of groups, which previously has, or most recently has been two groups when we've been dividing by two and thinking about odd and even numbers. Whereas today, we'd be sharing one at a time into five equal groups, okay? Another method that you might be using, depending on the question, is grouping. So as you can see here, seven doesn't represent the number of cubes in each group. This time, seven represents seven groups of five, so the number of groups. And that's like counting in our multiples up to the total. And this is where in your book, you would draw five inside a circle at a time and keep going until we get to the whole amount rather than sharing them out one at a time. Okay, so just to consolidate our thinking about that so we feel super confident, here are 15 conkers. The conkers are shared into five equal groups. The conkers are grouped into five. I wonder if you can have a go, either on your whiteboard or in your book, to show the difference between sharing and grouping, okay? So if you've got objects, brilliant. If not, perhaps have a go at recording this one. So please pause the video here. Well done, you two. I'm really proud of you. Okay, so I'm going to share my thinking with you. So here are 15 conkers. We know that 15 is the whole number. The conkers are shared into five equal groups. So if you're doing this in your book, I imagine you would have drawn the five counters in your five equal groups and shared the conkers one at a time into each equal group. And I'm going to share a picture of what that looks like with conkers. So how many conkers are in each equal group here to draw a circle around one of the groups? So you can clearly see the group, which I'm going to do for each group. So how many conkers are there in each group? Well done, there's three conkers in each group. So I wonder what the division is. 
Let's have a think about grouping first before we share the division. Okay, so there are 15 conkers and the conkers are grouped into fives. So for this question, I imagine you would have drawn five conkers at a time and kept counting in your fives until you got to the whole number, which is 15. So I'm going to share the pitch with you. As you can see here, we have three equal groups of five. So what is the division here to? Well done. The division is, we say it together, 15 divided by five equals three. Well done. Okay, on your screen now, you can see the step one questions. So please pause the video here and complete them in your maths book. Well done, year two. What a super start with your maths today. Okay, we're going to move on to the explore phase now of step two. And we just have one question to explore together today. So it says, use the array to complete the calculations. So there's some missing numbers in these calculations. Mm times five equals mm. So we're thinking about how many lots of five. We need to use this array to help us. And then we're going to be thinking about how um, multiplication helps us with our division. So to solve mm divided by five equals mm. Okay, so let's have a look at this array. I'm going to look at the rows and the columns to see where I can find groups of five. So please pause the video here and have a go at doing the same. Well done, year two. So first of all, I looked at the rows and I noticed in the rows that there are one, two, three, four, five, six counters. So I'm looking for a group of five. So instead, I'm going to look at the row. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. So I'm going to draw a circle around this group of five. And as I continue to do that on the array year two, wonder if you can work out how many lots of five there are. You may even be beginning to find the whole. So when talking about multiplication, we call this the product. Okay, nearly there, you two. So how many lots of five are there? Well done. There are six lots of five. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six columns of five here. So we are solving six times five. Who thinks they know what six times five is? Should we check and count in our multiples of five? I'm going to point to each column in the array as we count. Are you ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well done, the product of six and five equals 30. Brilliant, let's say this multiplication together using the word times. Six times five equals 30. Brilliant, well done you two. Okay, so using what we already, already know from the multiplication and the array, we're going to work out the missing numbers in the division. So with division, the whole amount is the dividends, the number that comes first in this division written here. So what is the dividend? Well done, we know that 30 is the dividend, it is the greatest number, it's the whole amount of counters in our array. So 30 divided by five equals mm. So this is where we're thinking how many lots of five equal 30. So we're using our multiplication to help us by thinking about the inverse. I'm going to just draw that line there to show you that link. Well done. The quotient is six. So let's read that division together. 30 divided by five equals six. Brilliant. Well done, you two. Okay, so on your screen now, you can see step two questions, very similar to what we've just looked at together. So please use the array to 
find the missing numbers in the multiplication and the division for 2a and 2b. And on 2c, it says draw an array to show that 10 divided by 5 equals 2. So you can use the examples that you're solving to help you with that one. Well done, year two. You are really flying high in maths today. OK, we're going to explore step three together. So the missing numbers are in, in different places again now, although I notice it's still, still the dividend on this one. So the question says, can you find the dividend? So we're trying to find the whole amount in these divisions. So building on your learning from the questions we've already explored together, wonder if you can just pause the video here and discuss how you're going to approach these questions to find the dividend. Well done, year two, great mathematical discussions. Okay, so I'm going to share my thinking with you. So we can use our multiplication to help us, which we've already been practicing this morning. And sometimes we call this the inverse operation when we're using the opposite, so multiplication, to help us with our division. So as you can see here, we are going to um, multiply the quotient and the divisor together. So five, sorry, nine times five equals hmm. So that's going to give us our dividend. So I wonder if you can pause the video here to solve nine times five. Well done, year two. So we know what 10 lots of five is and 10 lots of five is 50. So one lot of five less than 50 is 45, brilliant. The dividend is 45. Can we say that sentence together? The dividend is 45. Well done. Okay, so let's have a look at the next division. Mm, divided by five equals 12. So to solve this question and find the missing number, we can multiply 12 by five. So again, I wonder if you can use a known fact to help you with this one. So please pause the video here and find the dividend. Brilliant, super thinking year two. So I'm sure you probably use your known fact of 10 times five equals 50, and then thought about what two more lots of five. And I know from the review today, we know five and five is a number one to 10, and 10 more than 50 equals 60. So let's answer this question using a sentence together. The dividend is hmm. Are you ready? The dividend is 60. Brilliant, well done. So this is how we can use our multiplication to help us with our division. So on your screen now, year two, you can see the step three questions to solve in your book. So on 3A, there is a word problem. And on 3B, there are some questions where some of which are similar to the ones we've just explored together. So I've written a little note here in red as a reminder of how we can use our multiplication to help us with finding the missing dividends. Whereas I'm sure you can notice here, you are finding the quotients, okay? Well done, year two. Brilliant, well done. You've been absolutely amazing, year two. I am so proud of you. So on your screen now, you can see the answers for today. So please pause your video here to review your learning. Well done, year two. I'm so proud of you.